everyone. Welcome to Kiwi College. I'm Sarah Smith, the Editorial Director of Kiwi, and I'm very pleased to have you all here and to be here with Dr. Lawrence Rosen for the first in our new series of webinars about raising kids the natural and organic way. Dr. Rosen is our go-to pediatrician at Kiwi, and today he's going to talk about natural approaches to seasonal allergies. Um, we'll have time for him to take some of your questions at the end, so please type in, send your questions anytime during his talk. You can also send them um, at the end when he's answering questions. Um, the whole presentation will also be available uh, at kiwimagonline.com slash college, so you can uh, check in with anything that you might have missed. Now I'd like to turn things over to Dr. Rosen. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for uh, having me this evening, and uh, welcome to everyone. Um, as Sarah said, we will certainly have time for your questions, which you can type in right online, and uh, she'll read them to me, and i uh, be happy to answer as many as we can. Uh, tonight we're going to be discussing natural approaches to seasonal allergies, which um, I'm very honored to be uh, debuting this for Kiwi College. Um, and I hope that you'll find this format really user-friendly and something that it's uh, great to do from the, the comfort of your own home. Um, and it's also a really timely topic, uh, given that in many parts of the country, um, we uh, are seeing a lot of people suffering with seasonal allergies. Um, and it is something that every year, um, certainly in my office, is something that um, is, is a very prevalent complaint. And we'll spend a few minutes this evening talking about what exactly are seasonal allergies. And although we understand pretty well what the conventional approaches are, what are some of the more natural approaches you can take for you and your families? Um, I, just a minute about me um, so that you understand my perspective. Uh, I am the pediatric columnist for Kiwi. And uh, as well, I, for most of the day, I spend in my primary care practice in New Jersey, in Ardell. Uh, I'm the founder of a practice called the Whole Child Center, which is an integrative uh, primary care pediatric practice where we take care of infants, children, and adolescents from birth through uh, the 20s and um, take care of lots of children who have allergic disorders and other chronic disorders. Uh, I'm also the chair-elect of the American Academy of Pediatrics section on integrative medicine. For those of you who are familiar with the AAP, um, we actually have had a section on integrative medicine for a few years. It's a growing section with more and more pediatricians interested in working with families from an integrative perspective, and I'll discuss what that is as well. Also, I'm the medical advisor for the Deirdre Imus Environmental Center at Hackensack University Medical Center in New Jersey, and this role allows me to do research and advocacy work on behalf of children and families to identify and hopefully control those environmental exposures which may be causing health care issues for our children. And I have a, an appointment uh, in the pediatrics department at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. So, what exactly are seasonal allergies? We hear a lot of people discuss seasonal allergies. Um, it may seem obvious, but I'll just take you through this. Um, I think if you look at the picture of this girl with the flowers, that's what we all think of as seasonal allergies or allergic rhinitis. Rhinitis meaning swelling of the nose or mucous membranes of the nose. Um, this is probably the most common symptom that kids and adults feel. And that can lead to sneezing, an itchy nose, or even roof of the mouth, throat, eyes, or ears, a runny nose, or congested nose. But other parts of the body get involved as well, such as eyes, watery eyes, itchy eyes, discharge from the eyes, um, so much so that some children have difficulty seeing in the classroom. Uh, we also see behavioral changes with some children with seasonal allergies, and adults as well. Um, allergic rhinitis, or hay fever, um, can be seasonal in that it's typically caused by allergens like pollen, which can come around from season to season, or uh, either flower or tree pollen. Some people have rhinitis or, or nasal issues no matter what the season is, and this is called perennial allergic rhinitis. So for some people, unfortunately, this is not just an issue during spring or fall. It can be caused all year round by allergens such as animal dander, um, cats, dogs, and other animals. Mold and dust mites are probably two of the most common. And in urban centers, cockroach dander has been found to be one of the major triggers of allergies and asthma. 
So we do talk about seasonal allergic rhinitis, which is the, the runny nose symptoms, or as I mentioned, the eyes or throat. Um, and we do see a lot of children coming and complaining of sore throats, typically without fever. That's one of the distinguishing signs of allergic symptoms. But these allergic or atopic symptoms can start with birth and progress over lifetime. If you see this graph, which takes us from zero through the teenage years, early on, babies may exhibit signs of allergic disorders, including skin conditions like eczema, um, reflux, or severe spitting up due to certain foods in, in many cases, um, which is gastroesophageal reflux. And babies that have these conditions over time may be more likely, especially if they have a family history of allergic disorders, to develop other complications due to allergies or immune dysregulation. Those can include allergic rhinitis, but also can include food allergies and asthma. And it is these, these latter three, this triad, that make up this atopic uh, triad, we call it. And unfortunately, if you do display early signs, you are more likely to develop and have what we call the atopic march. So our challenge is, how can we address this early on, even prenatally, looking at family history and then with newborns and young babies to intervene preventively to prevent this from happening long term. So one way to look at that, and this is a, um, a medical paradigm shift, if you will, this is something I even I teach to uh, pediatricians and to other healthcare practitioners and to parents as well looking for the root cause, not just treating the symptoms as they happen. Those symptoms that we see, the rashes, the runny nose, the, the reflux, the wheezing, that's just the tip of the iceberg if you look at this diagram. If you look up here where clearly, you know, this is what we see, this is what we visualize, pe what people complain of when they go to the doctor. But there's a lot happening under the surface in this iceberg model, way down here. What happens is we start at the bottom with our genetic predisposition, but clearly, as we've seen over the past 20 years, there's been a rise in allergic disorders, which is not just based on genetics. We don't see um, genetic epidemics, if you will, but we're predisposed, and that usually you can look at family history and see that, but then there are environmental triggers, these lightning bolts that come in at inopportune times, causing symptoms to develop. This is the area that we hopefully can intervene at this point and to say, what are the nutritional triggers? What are the environmental triggers? Can we prevent these symptoms from developing and can we start early? And the answer is yes, we can. <laughs>